distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, I'll join my colleagues to express and register our appreciation to the IMF for hosting this press conference. The global economy is at a crossroad. This year's annual meetings of the IMF and the World Bank have taken place against the backdrop of a significant risk for the global economy. Global economic activities have slowed down and has become more even with downsized rates growing. Strong performance in the emerging economy and developing economies is offset by higher than expected weaknesses in the advanced countries and debt concerns in the United States and Europe. Fears of debt default in Greece and contagion, F, contagion to the rest of Europe and lack of political agreement in the United States <coughs> On a medium term fiscal consolidation framework, have added to the negative market sentiments. Now, more than ever, political institutions in the advanced economies need to rise to the current economic challenges to take the urgent action necessary to address weaknesses in the public, bank, and household balance sheets in order to restore confidence and prevent a global recession. For the African continent, economic performance during the pre-crisis decade was strong. This was due to actions taken by Africans to adopt good economic policies, build macroeconomic policy offers, implement far-reaching <coughs> structural reforms, improve economic governance, and end political conflicts. These pre-crisis buffers enabled the continent to withstand the effects of 2008-2009 crisis. However, we are, yet, we are not yet out of the woods. Recent developments in the global economy pose downside risks to the two sub-Saharan Africa, particularly heightened prices on the balance of payments, reduced export demands, and declining government revenue with serious implications for ongoing investment in agriculture, investment, employment, and achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. This is exacerbated by high food and energy prices. The risks are even greater this time around as we have already used up large part of our macroeconomic policy buffers, i.e. fiscal space external reserves to mitigate the impact of the crisis. Given this limited policy space, the international community must stand ready to provide additional concessionary financing and policy advice to the innocent bystanders impacted by the crisis. In Sub-Saharan Africa, policy is focused on rebuilding policy buffers, strengthening financial institutions, fostering inclusive growth, and strengthening social safety nets. All of this has to be done with a view has been done with a view to maintaining medium-term fiscal sustainability. So you can see the enormity of the task at hand. It is in this context that the government of the Gambia continues to do all it can to protect its people from the impact of the crisis. Economic growth is strong, 5.5%. Inflation is relatively low, 4%. External reserve stands at 5.1 month of imports and we have strong progress towards achieving, we have made strong progress towards achieving the Millennium Development Goals. We plan to further progress by implementing our program on accelerated growth and employment which aims at scaling up resources for infrastructure investment to increase economic growth, job creation, and meeting of the Millennium Development Goals. We are putting agriculture and food security first. This is a priority given the recent increases in food prices. Accordingly, the Gambia National, Inve National Agricultural Investment Program was launched with the objective of achieving increased contribution to agriculture and GDP whilst ensuring food security through the targeting on investment in land preparation, irrigation, and provision of agricultural inputs. Ensuring, in ensuring attainment of these targets, budgetary allocations to the sector have been doubled and will continue to be increased towards the attainment of the 2003 Mokutu Declaration target. I will record the call from my <coughs> colleagues that we need investment from the uh, uh, 
uh, advanced countries in our energy. So far, the Gambia, we have moved far ahead. We, are, we have liberalized the energy sector, and we also already have a, a, an a independent power producer agreement ongoing, and this has positively impacted on our uh, energy sector. Economic management in our countries has been made more difficult by the crisis emanating from the advanced economies. Our <coughs> economies are irrevocably bound, bound together. Therefore, to some extent, continued strong performance of sub-Saharan African economies depend on political commitment and strong policy actions from advanced countries to revive their economies. With this, there are dark days ahead. I thank you all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Njai.